Hello, my name is Luciano Costa. I'm a multiple myeloma physician at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm here in Chicago at the American Society of Clinical Oncology annual meeting. Um, and we just had uh, yesterday uh, the session where uh, most of the uh, up, uh, exciting new information in multiple myeloma uh, was presented. Um, and like in prior years, this has been a, a very exciting year uh, for uh, multiple myeloma researchers and uh, evidently for multiple myeloma patients as we saw several advances. Um, among the uh, new information presented at the meeting, uh, we saw a phase three trial called the ARROW study that compared uh, the standard low dose carfilzomib uh, giving at the dose of 27 milligrams per square meters uh, twice a week uh, compared uh, with high dose carfilzomib 70 milligrams per square meter given on a weekly schedule uh, for patients with two or three prior lines of therapy. And uh, what the investigators found, uh, and this was presented by Dr. Mateos yesterday, there was a reduction in risk of disease uh, progression on patients treated uh, with high dose weekly schedule of perfusumib. Although uh, this seems uh, trivial, we think it has a high impact uh, not only on how uh, carfilzomib is going to be further developed in multiple myeloma, but also has some very practical implications for patients. Uh, because as somebody who uh, treats myeloma patients on a daily basis, I can uh, predict that uh, going from twice a weekly to once a weekly is going to make this therapy much more acceptable to patients, much more convenient to patients. Uh, and it's nevertheless reassuring to see an improvement uh, in response and improvement in disease control. Another very exciting study uh, was presented by Dr. Uh, Richardson uh, from Boston. Uh, there was a, 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 compa a phase three trial comparing uh, uh, bortezomib, dexamethasone with pomalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone. In a population of patients, uh, that was very uh, enriched for patients who are lenalidomide refractory. And again, we saw a significant decline in risk of disease progression when pomalidomide was added to bortezomib and dexamethasone. We consider that to be a very important study uh, because uh, it gives a very definitive uh, uh, information that even though patients have become refractory to one immunomodulatory agent, in this case in alidomide, they still benefit tremendously from the use of another immunomodulatory agent, pomalidomide, in their subsequent line of therapy. And another important aspect is that it also uh, solidifies the concept that patients should, uh, for the most part, be treated with triplet combination as opposed to dual combinations when they experience disease relapse uh, uh, in multiple myeloma. I had the pleasure to present uh, an abstract uh, phase two study with the combination of carfilzomib and venetoclax, the BCL2 uh, inhibitor, um, in a population with a median of uh, two prior lines of therapy, uh, with the majority of patients being refractory to the last line of therapy. And we found a very high response rate, 83%, uh, with similarly high uh, uh, rate of response is seen in patients with high risk chromosome abnormalities as well as low risk chromosome abnormalities, including patients with known 1114 uh, translocation. Uh, Dr. Barrettson from uh, LA also presents some intriguing data. We're using low dose in alidomide and, and the JAK2 antagonist, roxolitinib. Uh, in patients with relapsed multiple myeloma, which is kind of an out-of-the-box idea, uh, uh, suggests that you can restore uh, sensitivity to lenalidomide by combining with this uh, agent that so far has been used in other uh, blood cancers, uh, but not uh, in uh, multiple myeloma. We also saw some uh, very uh, stimulating data on cellular therapy uh, for multiple myeloma. Uh, Dr. Shah from the uh, uh, University of Color uh, California in San Francisco uh, presented uh, data on using pore derived NK uh, T cells uh, to treat uh, uh, multiple myeloma. 
uh, there was a very uh, preliminary but yet very intriguing data. Uh, uh, we also saw follow-up data on the uh, uh, BB2121 CAR T cell uh, construct from a Bluebird now being updated with additional patients, again showing a very high rate of uh, disease control uh, in patients with uh, heavily uh, pretreated uh, multiple myeloma. Uh, there are several questions that remain on CAR T cell in general, uh, including this uh, particular platform, including uh, how to make those remissions uh, more uh, durable um, in patients and how does uh, the therapy would perform in earlier lines of therapy when patients don't have as an aggressive disease as the patients who have been included in those trials so far. And uh, last but not least, we have a very enlightening presentation uh, from uh, the FDA uh, on the uh, uh, final observations on the two uh, pembrolizumab trials in combination uh, with immunomodulatory agents uh, in newly diagnosed and in relapsed uh, uh, myeloma patients. Those trials were held uh, back last year due to increased risk of death on the arms that receive uh, pembrolizumab. Uh, and we learned on that session uh, a little bit more about the nature of those deaths, many being uh, due to uh, immune-mediated toxicity, um, and also, uh, as well as the, we had some further elaboration on the concept that this, uh, the checkpoint inhibitors may be particularly challenging in the newly diagnosed setting where patients have a more vigorous immune system that has not yet been attempted by uh, prior myeloma therapies. I think uh, the question remains whether the checkpoint inhibitors uh, will have a role in multiple myeloma. Uh, I think this question cannot yet be answered, but at least we have uh, much more uh, uh, data and we have uh, much more uh, uh, guidance on the safe next steps to take uh, if we're gonna find a role for those agents in multiple myeloma. Okay.